a two-year stint at a radio disc, as a radio disc jockey as a member of the military and Seoul career. Over the years, Mr. Booth has served in a number of capacities in the radio entertainment field, which includes roles as radio disc jockey, radio and stadium announcement, radio program director, radios, and radio station general manager. Moving to Richmond, Virginia in 1984 to become general manager of a radio station, Mr. Booth has spent more than half of his radio career in our community and worked for such radio stations as WRVA, K95 FM, and 107.3 FM. Now, therefore, Richmond City Council does hereby recognize and honor Mr. Tony Booth on the occasion of his celebration of more than 50 years in radio and brings this to the attention of all our residents so that they may share in his joyous celebration. Thank you. Okay. Tony, what a pleasure. I must admit, I normally don't see Tony in council chambers. I <laughs> normally see him somewhere else, and I can assure you he looks better here at night as opposed to the YMCA where I normally see him. Thank you very much. I'm glad you qualified that. <laughs> I wasn't sure where you were going, Bruce. Well, I was told to clean it up. Uh, <laughs> Tony That's usually I, what we were doing yeah, when we yeah, see yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah, it's true, too. Tony and I have actually known each other since 1984. And actually, I got to meet him at the Y, and that's how we began a relationship. And at first, I didn't realize what Tony did on a daily basis, nor did he know what I did on a daily basis. So it was kind of a, we got to know each other, and over the years, we've become good friends. And I will tell you, I have a tremendous admiration for what he does on a daily basis. Um, if you've ever listened to the radio shows that he does, they are a notch above everyone else's. I first picked up on it when he was with K95, and, the, and he was... He, he had zero knowledge of country music, but he... Well, at least the country they play today. Yeah, yeah. So as it turned out, fortunately, he did a lot of research, and then he decided to go back to his roots, and he went to 107, and there he talks about the songs with a passion, and he sets the stage so that everyone has an understanding of what was happening at the time, why that song actually got to where it was, and what made it happen. And it's fascinating to hear the stories he tells uh, over and over and over and over again. But that's a good thing. And uh, after 50 years, I really hope that you get it right. And I hope you do this for another 50 years. And it's a real pleasure on behalf of City Council to give you this award. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I don't know who's running, you or me, after that. <laughs> I'm running. Oh, you, you're running. Thank you very much uh, for the council and this recognition and allowing me for 27 years of that 50 years to pollute the airwaves here in uh, Richmond. And I, uh, as long as the good Lord gives me health, I'll continue to do it. Thanks, Bruce, and thanks, everybody else. By the way, this is my wife of 38 years. Oh, well, that's 19 for her and 19 for me, but it's 38 years. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Clerk, at this time, may we please review the list of amendments to tonight's agenda? Okay. The amendments for tonight's agenda consist of item number two, ordinance number 2012-64, uh, to amend the city code for the purpose of requiring city council's approval for um, construction Prop, um, cons, professional service contracts with a value greater than $100,000. That paper is continued to September the 24th. Um, item number six, ordinance number 2012-111 has been amended and continued to later on tonight. I'll go back to item number three, um, ordinance number 2012-72 has been continued to September the 24th. Item number seven, 
Ordinance number 2012-141, continued to September the 24th. Item number 20, resolution number 2012-R43, continued to September the 24th. Item number 21, resolution number 2012-R72, continued to September the 10th. Item number 22, resolution number 2012-R81 has been withdrawn. Item number 23, resolution number 2012-R89, continued until September the 10th. Item number 28, resolution number 2012-R99, continued to September the 10th. On the regular agenda, item number 29, ordinance number 2011-206, withdrawn. Item number 30, resolution number 2011-207, continued until November the 12th. Item number 31, ordinance number 2012-4, continued until September the 24th. Item number 33, ordinance number 2012-61, withdrawn. Um, item number 32, ordinance number 2012-29 um, has been continued till September the 10th. Item number... That, excuse me, Mr. Crook, that is also going to be amended this evening, I believe. Okay, amended and continued. Right. Item number 34, ordinance number 2012-84. Uh, we're moving to the consent agenda. Item number 35, ordinance number 2012-109. We're also moving to the consent agenda. And items number 36 through 62, which are um, properties that are recommended for um, tax exemption. Um, continued to September the 10th. Item number 63. Um, we will keep that on the regular agenda. Item number 65. Ordinance number 2012-155 has been moved to the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Does any member of council have additional amendments to tonight's agenda? Uh, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. On items President. number 21 and 23, I think he said that they were continued to September 10th, when actually they're going to be heard on August 15th. Hey, Amen, committee. But then they'll be forwarded to council on September 10th. Correct? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Connor. Madam President. Yes, sir. Um, I, I'm perhaps missed at item number 64, which is 2012 153. <coughs> yes, sir. Is that retained on the regular agenda tonight? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on the agenda? We'll need a motion to approve the agenda before us. Okay, I need a motion to accept the amended agenda as presented. So move. Okay, the roll call. Uh, Mr. Connor? Here. And then we're calling now and we're calling for the question. Call for, call for question. We're calling on the... Um, we're calling to vote on the agenda review and amendments. Okay. I need a motion to accept the amended agenda as presented. I, I believe Mr. Tyler made that, that motion, so now, yeah. Mr. Clerk, just call the question. Okay, call for question. Mr. 
Ms. Mr. Connor, call the question now. We need to vote on it. Okay. Now we're voting on the amended agenda before you. Correct. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Madam Vice President? Aye. Um, Mr. Jewell? Aye. Mrs. Newbill? Aye. Mrs. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. And Madam President Graziano? Aye. Okay, the, the amended agenda is passed. Thank you, Mr. Cook. At this time, I believe we will take um, papers number 63 and next, number 64 together. Ordinance number, paper number 63, ordinance number 2012-152, uh, to declare a public necessity for and to authorize the acquisition of properties identified as project area owned by Gamble Hills, LLC, and to be con conveyed to Venture Richmond. Um, item number 64, ordinance number 2012-153, to authorize the CAO to execute a gift and dedication to the real property and development agreement between Gambles Hill LLC and Venture Richmond. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Is there anyone in the audience to speak in opposition to either of these papers? Hi, uh, my name is Chris Dorsey. I'm, I'm uh, coming before the council to speak in opposition to uh, number 63, um, to declare a public necessity for and authorize the acquisition of property identified as the property area, in quotes, three stars, owned by Gambles Hill LLC, and to be conveyed to Venture Richmond, three stars, for a purchase price not to exceed $916,640,000, or $916,000 and, you know, some added to that, uh, for the purpose of construction of a second street connector. Uh, oh, excuse me, uh, for pu public right-of-ways. Um, I just want to say I, I, I oppose everything that this council does. Uh, I definitely oppose everything that Venture Richmond does. I'm not really sure what all this stuff means, but I do know that the people who pull all of your strings up there are the people who sit on the board of Venture Richmond, the millionaires and billionaires that control uh, everything that you do. And um, usually, well, if not always, and I say always, they're up to some sort of nefarious activity, stealing money from people, uh, lining their pockets. And since there is not any specific uh, description of this ordinance that the average person can understand, um, I'm opposing it and assuming that it is for nefarious purposes, um, using past actions as a guide. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, is there anyone here to speak in favor of this paper? Okay. All right, let's bring it back to council for discussion. Council discussion? Mr. Jewell? Yes. Uh, I've, I've been fully briefed on this paper. It's a good project. It makes sense. Um, um, the... Uh, uh, the... The trade-offs that are being made uh, between Gamble Hill, Dominion, City of Richmond, uh, uh, it all seems to fit. Uh, my only concern has been from the very outset this culver, um, a culver that uh, neither Dominion nor Richmond or Gamble Hill or any of the rest 
insist upon, uh, they had one already programmed in, uh, in the design that was maybe this big. Uh, but for some future purpose of reopening a canal that is about as questionable as anything I've ever seen, given uh, the history of this city and how we, how we get things done, uh, it could be 20, 30, 50 years, who knows, uh, before that canal could ever be open. Lastly, uh, uh, it really doesn't need to be open in that area. Uh, if we want to run a canal up to Maymount, which is uh, uh, for leisure purposes and, and adding to uh, quality of life as an amenity, uh, it sounds good enough, but it certainly doesn't have to start there. Uh, but we're going to add nearly $400,000 to a project that the city got to pay for, uh, for a, a culver for some future eventuality uh, when uh, we know engineers who can cut on the roads and uh, cut on the dams and everything else uh, uh, with their know-how and their skill that could be done then for probably uh, no more the cost. Um, maybe some people think we're rich right now because we're not bleeding and, and filing bankruptcy as a city. Uh, but Lord knows we've got other needs in the city. Uh, I'm going to vote for it. Uh, I'm going to hold my nose and vote for it only for that reason. Otherwise, it's a good project that ought to happen. And uh, I just think that the city pushing forward on this culver and that cost is wasteful and inadvisable. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Other comments? Call, call the question, Mr. Clark. <clears throat> Council is voting on item number 63 and 64. Mr. Connors? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Madam Vice President Robson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Mrs. Newbill? Aye. Mrs. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. Madam President Graciano? Aye. Okay, this paper is passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. At this time, may we have any, pa any papers that need to be amended and continued? Let's have those amendments. We have two papers to be amended and continued. We'll start with item number six, which is ordinance number 2012-111. That's to authorize the chief administrative officer to accept $14,000 from the Virginia Office of the Attorney General and to appropriate the amount to the Richmond Office of the Commonwealth Attorney for the purpose of reducing gang activities in targeted neighborhoods. The proposed amendment to that paper is as follows. Page 1, line 7, after the word they, delete the word Richmond Office of the Commonwealth Attorney and insert the words Office of the Deputy Chief Administrative Officer for Human Services. Page 2, line 1, after the word the, delete the word Richmond Office of the Commonwealth Attorney and insert the words Office of the Deputy Chief Administrative Officer for Human Services. I will need a motion to accept the amendment to that paper as presented and to continue that paper to the Monday, September 10th, 2012 meeting. Mr. Tyler, will you make that motion? So move. Council is voting on Councilman Tyler's motion to accept the amendment to Ordinance 2012-111 as presented and to continue that paper to Monday, September the 10th. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. That paper has been amended and continued to Monday, September the 10th, 2012. The next item for amendment and continuous consideration is item number 32, which is ordinance number 2012-29. That's to authorize a special use of 122 Timsford Lane for the purpose of authorizing an additional lot to be served as a private access easement, as amendment. 
The proposed amendment to that paper is as follows. Page two, line two, after the word revised, delete the inserted date May 10th and insert the date July 11th. Page three, line 21, after the period following the word plans, insert the text, the area for specific improvements such as garages, utility buildings, driveways, parking areas, and other similar accessory structures shall also be limited to the areas shown for such improvements on the attached plans. The setbacks required shall be as shown on the attached plans. No structures shall be permitted in the area outside the buildable area and the area for accessory structures shown on the attached plans. Item J, 12 and a half feet of natural buffer shall be preserved in the area between the western property line and the buildable area. Natural buffer means that the area shall be preserved in its natural state and shall not be planted, landscaped, or maintained. No trees or other vegetation may be removed unless all trees or other vegetation pose a threat to the health, safety, or welfare of any property owner as determined by a certified arborist. There shall be a 15-foot landscape buffer in the area shown as the landscape buffer on the attached plans. The landscape buffer shall be continuous evergreen vegetation screen, not less than three and one half feet in height, and at the time of the landscape buffers, at the time of the landscape buffers installation. Evergreen vegetation material intended to satisfy this requirement shall be planted at intervals and will result in a continuous visual screen within one year of planting. There shall be 30 feet of natural buffer preserved in the area between the western property line and the area identified as the garage and driveway slash site area on the attached plans. All these conditions shall be met prior to the issuance of a, a certificate of occupancy for the single family dwelling structured on the lot. K, to the exempt permitted by all applicable laws, rules, and regulations governing the installation, operation, and maintenance of the mechanical equipment installed on the western side of the property. All mechanical equipment on the western side of the property shall be fully screened from view from the property adjacent to the western property line to the extent that this provision conflicts with any applicable laws, rules, and regulations governing the installation, operation, and maintenance of the mechanical property on the western side of the property. Those laws, rules, and regulations shall control. Item L, the southwest elevation of the building constructed in the buildable area shall be limited to two stories. The northwest elevation of the building constructed in the buildable area shall be limited to one story. No garage, utility building, or similar accessory structure shall exceed one story in height. The purpose of the subject L, the term story, shall have the meaning ascribed thereto to section 114-1220 of the Code of the City of Richmond, 2004, as amended. Item M. In a garage is, if a garage is built in the area identified as the attached plans, as the garage and driveway slash site area west of the driveway, there should be a landscape buffer meeting the requirements of the landscape buffer described in section J of this section along with, along the western side of the garage of the length corresponding to that of the garage. Page five, line 13. At the beginning of the line, delete the letter I and insert the letter N. I will need a motion to accept the amendment to that paper as presented and to continue that paper to September 10th, 2012. Councilman Samuels, will you make that motion? So moved. Council is voting on Councilman Samuels' motion to accept the amendment to ordinance number 2012-29 and to continue that paper to Monday, September the 10th. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. That paper has been amended and continued to Monday, September the 10th. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, or Mr. Clerk, please call the list of speakers for the citizen comment period. The first speaker tonight is Melvin Jones.
Good afternoon, members of council. My name is Melvin Jones, and I am reside in the 3rd District. Um, this afternoon, I've come to you to speak about um, the proposal for Maggie Walker statue. Um, I'm running into some opposition with um, Broad Adam and Brook Road. So uh, we came up with another um, place to put it at Lee and Belvedere. It's a lot right across the street from um, Belvedere Medical Center. Um, I would like to have council support on this. And another item that I want to bring up is Maggie Walker's birthday. I wanted to see if city council would do a proclamation to have Maggie Walker recognized for July the 15th. Um, her birthday was July the 15th, 1964, I mean 1864, I'm sorry. And, um, you know, I would like to see that as a proclamation for the years to come, you know, for the students, because during the summer they've got the daycare programs going to the Maggie Walker House. And, um, you know, it's been some opposition that I'm the only one to come up here to speak about Maggie Walker statue, but we got other folks that really support it, that they can't get down here. So, you know, I'm the president of the Maggie L. Walker Statue Foundation. I'm the first vice president of the Maggie L. Walker Alumni Association. I reside that position now. So, you know, it's been a proposal put there back in 2000 um, about putting a statue of Maggie Walker at Broad Adams and Brook Road. That, I don't know what happened to that proposal, but council did one for me for um, October the 25th of 2010 to put a statue of Maggie Walker at Adams Broad and Brook Road. But the problem is, is the tree there and you got irrigation. And I think the city um, was trying to work with me on that. But I, like I say, I'm coming up with some opposition on that proposal, putting it at Broad Adams and Brook Road. So my next step is to put it at Belvedere and Lee. It's a nice big lot there and it's a gateway to um, Jackson Wall and historic Carver District and also VCU is putting up a nice dorm right down the street from it and it's access to the highway and I really think it would be a good position there it's putting a nice park there and have a Maggie Walker statue there so I would like City Council to support this paper and try to put one in for Maggie Walker's birthday thank you thank you Madam President, the next speaker is Reginald Elam. Good afternoon, City Council of Richmond, Virginia, late, uh, Madam President, and other honored guests. My name is Reginald Elam. I am a resident of the City of Richmond, of the south side of the City of Richmond. I come to bring before you a situation that I'm quite certain you probably have heard, but I want to bring before your forum this afternoon. I own a Dodge Grand Caravan that I have been the owner of for a number of years. And having this car, I have performed the maintenance and the requirements by the Commonwealth of Virginia for safety. When necessary, I changed the brakes, I purchased the tires, and with other little divots that my mechanic tells me that's necessary. Last year, one of my mechanical associates told me that the stress on my car per the particular area that I live in is running my car ragged. I need to upgrade my front end. So therefore, I went in and decided to be proactive. I changed the front end struts. I changed the brakes. I changed the axles. I have changed the rotors and all other associated material. And I even went to purchase a new set of front end tires. This is my car has a transaxle, which is a transaxle engine transmission combination, all of the weights on the front. So therefore, we want to be totally secure. Brand new tires that you can put a quarter through that goes through the little divots and it would not move. In one year's time, after doing all of the work that was necessary and some to be proactive, I noticed that the comfort and control of my car is not up to specs. Therefore, I had my car checked out. And it was quite shocking in what was told to me about what happens. Now, when I go to my local council person's meetings in the Jeff Davis district, I have to sometimes 
play Chinese checkers on Jeff Davis Highway. And on occasion when I have traveled to Midlothian, when they said that that was going to be repaved, I was elated because I have business to take care of in that direction as well. To add an insult to injury, they did not repave all the way up to Belt Boulevard where some of my mechanical associates are located. So therefore, my steering is rough at best when I hit the uneven potholes and manhole covers and things of that nature. So when I went in to have my car checked, because I had some other mechanical work to be done, following along to keep it uh, viable to operate, they explained to me that my front end that I had purchased last year was for naught because the struts are not up to spec. The city streets have blown my struts and therefore a front end that has also eaten, eaten up the tires on my car that has to be replaced and have been replaced because if not, then not only would I not be safe, but I'd be sighted. So with that in mind, I've also learned that I have a shock in the back of my car that has to be redivided and reinserted with a more secure bolt. Thirty seconds. Thank you. Therefore, I decided to bring to you the issues of the streets in the particular area that I live that in the time that I have had this car and maintained it, in one year's time that I was told that I needed to change everything that was wearing out, it didn't even last one year. So I'm at an end because right now to replace this is costing me thousands of dollars and right now resource as it is a short supply, I decided to come to you to explain my dilemma. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for bringing this to our Madam. attention. Ms. Trammell? Yeah, Madam President, he lives in 8th District. <laughs> Reggie, thank you um, for coming down here tonight because I know you and I have talked about this. Yes, And you're not the only one that's complaining about the streets over here in Southside. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, $21 million for bike routes across the river, it's a shame. I think Mr. Mayor needs to look at Southside. I would appreciate I guess, it if you did. I guess um, reason why we're not fixing all the roads over here because the bikers are not going to be over here riding their bicycles because, as I've said before, if they do, and you know that, what you said about your car, you've got to play in and out, in and out. As Chinese checkers. Do. Back, forth, back, forth. Yes, ma'am. Jefferson Davis because if they came down here on Jefferson Davis, they fall off the bike and end up in MCV with head trauma and everything else. Mm -hmm. So we know they ain't going to be riding over here. No. But anyway, we need to do something about those roads over here in Southside because it's not only the 8th District, it's all over. Because even on Kofa Road, um, Jefferson Davis, Hall Street, Broad Rock, calls are coming in from everywhere. Midlothian, everywhere. Forest Hill, about how bad the roads are over here. Have you filed a complaint with um, the city attorney? No, I have not. I wasn't aware that that was an option. And I, Ms. Trammell, I was going to say to this gentleman is that Mildred Kennedy's in the back representing administration, and she's probably somebody that you can talk to. If you want to file a claim, she can give you the information as to how to do it. I'd appreciate it very much, Madam okay. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. It's sad. Madam President, those are all of tonight's speakers. Thank you, Mr. Clark. And before we go to our um, consent agenda, we have one expedited paper that I'd like to take up right now, and that would be um, the expedited paper to appoint David Johannes as a member of the Planning Commission. Okay, that would be resolution number 2012-R105 to appoint David Johannes as a member of the city's Planning Commission. I will need a motion for expedited consideration of that paper. Mr. Connor, will you make that motion? Uh, so moved, Madam Clerk. Council is voting on Councilman Connor's motion for expedited consideration of Resolution 2012-R105. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. That paper is before you for consideration. Thank you. Mr. Johannes, you can sit down now until we have the vote, and then if you would meet the clerk, that would be great. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this appointment? In opposition? Back to council for discussion? <clears throat> Call the question, Mr. Clerk. Council is voting on Resolution 2012-R105 as presented. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. That paper has been adopted.
Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you for serving. Appreciate it. All right, at this time, Madam Clerk, will you give us a review of the items on, ton or on tonight's consent agenda? The following items are on this evening's consent agenda. Item number one, ordinance number 2012-30, and that's to amend city code concerning the certificate of appropriateness to allow extensions of the council's review period. Item number four, ordinance number 2012-103, and that's to authorize the special use of 1315 Exchange Alley. Excuse me, Madam Clerk, just one second. Is there somebody that's going to go back and swear, Mr. Johannesson? Yes. Okay, thanks. Somebody's coming. 13, Sorry, Madam Clerk. That's right. 1326 East Cary, a portion of a private alley and a portion of Virginia, Virginia Street for the purposes of waiving parking and loading requirements and per permitting additional signage for the hotel use. Item number five, ordinance number 2012-110, and that's to amend city code for the purpose of increasing court costs and civil actions to $4 to provide for the operation of the public law library. Item number eight, ordinance number 2012-142, to authorize the special use of 1103 North Boulevard for the purposes of, multi of a multifamily dwelling and auto service center and use permitted in the B6 mixed-use business district. Item number nine, ordinance number 2012-143, and that's to amend the use of 3218 Chamberlain Avenue by removing a condition that limits such office use to specific religious organizations. Item number 10, ordinance number 2012-144, to authorize the special use of 1200 East Carry for the purposes of a social service delivery use and an expansion of the existing building with a partial waiver of parking requirements. Item number 11, ordinance number 2012-145, and that's to execute an amendment to an agreement between the city and VDOT for the purpose of providing additional funding for the Hull Street Passenger Station project. Item number 12, ordinance number 2012-146, and that's to accept funds from VDOT for the purpose of making improvements to the former Hull Street Station. 13, ordinance number 2012-147, to execute an agreement between the city and the National Railway Historic Society for the purpose of modifying the party's agreement to provide additional funding for the Hull Street Passenger Station project. 14, ordinance number 2012-148, to execute an agreement between the city and the Economic Development Authority for the purpose of administering a loan program funded with a Section 108 loan from HUD. Item number 15, ordinance number 2000, ordinance number, item number 15, ordinance number 2012-149, and that's to accept funds from the State Board of Election for the purpose of reimbursing the city for costs incurred in conducting the 2012 Republican Party presidential primary election. 16, ordinance number 2012-150, to execute a lease of property agreement between the city and Lehigh Cement Company for the purpose of allowing 3011 and 3111 Water Street as a storage and distribution facility for cement products. Item number 17, ordinance number 2012-151, to amend the general fund budget for FY13 by transferring 7160000 from the rainy day unassigned general fund and appropriating these funds for the purpose of consumer consummating the proposed resolution of the Rogers versus City of Richmond case and for making other payments relating to the overtime compensation for police officers. Item number 18, ordinar, ordinance number 2012-154, to name the roadways within Moore and Mont Olivet. Oakwood, Riverview, and Shock Hill, Shaco Hill cemeteries as set forth in the Cemetery Street Name Program. Item number 19, ordinance number 2012-156, to establish an affordable housing trust fund advisory board. Item number 24, resolution number 2012-R102, to dispense with the regular meetings of council during the month of August. Yes. 25, resolution number 2012-R103, to approve funds for the printing and mailing of a newsletter to second district residents. Item number 26, resolution number 2012-R104, to designate 718 East Franklin and 112, excuse me, North 8th Street as a vitalization area. Item number 34, ordinance number 2012-84, to authorize the special use of 1810 East Carry for the purpose of a parking deck and a multifamily dwelling. Item number 35, ordinance number 2010-109, to amend city code to impose a flat fee of 100 for adoption of dogs, cats, puppies, and kittens. 
And the last item is item number 65, ordinance number 2012-155. And that's to re repeal and to amend city code for the purposes of abolishing the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Oversight Board and reassigning the powers and duties to the CAO. That concludes the reading of this evening's consent agenda. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, are there persons in the audience who wish to speak in opposition to any of these papers? She missed Hi, my name is Greg Gunter. I uh, am a citizen of the city of Richmond, and I wanted to talk on uh, uh, City Code 2012-110 to amend the city code for the purpose of increasing court costs and civil actions to $4 to provide for the cost of operation of the public library. Um, it's a civil action is conceivably where somebody's done something unjust and now they're before the court to have liberty take its way. And this is basically, it seems to draw revenue from people screwing up. And it's kind of, it's kind of unconscious in that way. It's like, hey, people screw up, might as well make some money off of it. It's kind of like what it seems like. Four dollars to operate the public library. And there's one person who works there and the public law library. I've been there a few times and it seems pretty well stocked. Uh, it's very thorough and I don't know why I'd need more money in the first place. And um, it just seems like making money off of people screwing up is uh, kind of the opposite direction you want to go in a society that's hopefully, a, hopefully aspiring to more egalitarian levels of operation because now you have an interest in making sure that well, you have an interest in people screwing up, basically, when we should be working to go the opposite direction and uh, to higher levels of moral behavior and just behavior. And this is kind of, this is just, it, it seems trivial, it's just $4, but it's very, it's kind of just stagnating in your filth. <laughs> it's kind of what it feels like. I don't mean you, I just mean society, you know. So making money off of uh, civil actions to supply the public law library, I think taxes can handle it. And again, it's kind of a simple operation. The public law library doesn't seem like it needs anything else. But uh, yeah, don't make money off of people screwing up. Like don't don't even create the incentive. So uh, yeah, I would say it's a moral issue. You should work to get people to get along with each other and not make money off of them acting foolish. That's all I wanted to say. Please don't vote for this. It's, it's pretty basic. Just don't vote for it. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Theodore Rubis. I'm speaking against item 8, um, order number 2012-142. I represent two parties in this matter. And uh, the first party is AMPA Events, which is my business. We are directly next door to the property 1103 North Boulevard. We are at 1105 North Boulevard. Our company builds props and scenery for the event industry and for various purposes uh, for clients of ours. We have trucks and uh, trucks going and coming at all hours uh, as we work late into the night. Our scene shop happens to work late into the night at times, especially during busy periods. Um, we have enough to fight in as a small business when it comes to various distractions to creating jobs in the, in the uh, current economy and, and, in, and even in a good economy. But having neighbors next door that are residents complaining about noise would be something detrimental to my business. AMPA Events is a net positive producer of jobs in the city of Richmond. We have 10 plus employees right now. Um, I ask that on this point, uh, it, it, and make the statement, this, is, this will be detrimental and a distraction to my business. The second party that I represent is Rubisco Corporation, of which I am part of, I am a member of this corporation. Um, the purpose of Rubisco buying the property on the boulevard was for retail. Um, we are very pro-retail on the boulevard. We're vested in the boulevard. We're interested in buying more property in the areas. And retail offers the city a source of revenue other than real estate taxes to run the city on. We don't have much retailing north of the river in the city of Richmond currently. That whole quarter of the boulevard can be a thriving retailing district. I ask the members of the committee to send this back to the Planning Commission for further study 
and for a more detailed program for the boulevard that has retailing as a primary emphasis for the betterment of the boulevard and for the betterment of the city of Richmond. It's a great entry to the city. It has great square footage, great buildings in the area, and another great revenue source for our fair city. So please send this back to the Planning Commission for further study and a better program of development for the boulevard. And uh, please consider also that this would be detrimental to my business, a net positive producer of jobs in the city of Richmond. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. My name is Chris Dorsey. I'm going to be uh, speaking in opposition to a number of papers. And I would also like to state, uh, uh, before I start, that I think that it is um, uh, questionable to force all this legislation through all at once with, uh, without really giving the public much of a description about what's going on. So saying that, I'll, I'll move forward. And I, I'm going to be speaking in opposition to, of Ordinance number 2012-148, uh, giving a loan of $10 million to the Economic Development Authority um, to act on behalf of uh, housing and urban development. Now, I will say that um, the recent track record of the Economic Development Authority uh, um, uh, telling this body to uh, short the school board while at the same time, uh, two weeks later, um, giving uh, a $15 million so-called surplus to, uh, uh, I don't think that, that clock is right, but uh, to uh, uh, renovate the mosque theater um, on behalf of the uh, wealthy uh, theater goers in the city. Also, uh, um, Ordinance 2012-149, reimbursing the State Board of Elections, uh, uh, you know, with the, with the articles in the paper about kind of the fraudulent behavior of the Richmond Registrar's Office and Kirk Showalter and, and Don Palmer and the State Board of Elections, um, I don't see that they need reimbursed for anything. I think that they actually need to be investigated for, uh, for suppression of the ballot and for voter fraud. And, and that's been documented by myself and others for violations of the Registrar's Office of uh, GRE Book uh, Section 10. And finishing up with Rogers versus Richmond, um, I would watch out if I were the attorney for, uh, for the police department because there were, at one point, um, I would say about $100 million worth of lawsuits uh, regionally um, for lack of payment of overtime hours for the police. And ever since the, uh, um, the lawyer for Chesterfield County was um, assassinated the day before he, uh, he went to uh, put those papers in, um, the only thing that has resulted is a $7 million uh, uh, payment, which, according to uh, uh, Ms. Trammell, was $33 million dollars um, I would say two months ago, and I think it was closer to forty million dollars before that. But I'm wondering how this how this money is dwindling, and I'm just saying absolutely, without any hesitation, that this body and every other body associated with this government is a fraud. Thank you very much. Please begin to summarize. Thank you, sir. And, and actually, I guess that that clock right there is not matching up with the. Uh, uh, the, uh, vo the voice behind the uh, curtain. So I just want to point that out before I finish. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll look into it. All right. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of any of these papers? Good evening, uh, Madam uh, President Graciano and Vice President Robertson and Council Members. I'm Johnny Walker at 1704 West Over Hills Boulevard in the 4th District. And I'm here to uh, speak on behalf of the risk organization tonight on Ordinance 2012-156 uh, and 2012-155. We at RISC want to thank the council for renewed uh, energy and putting the, um, an effective affordable housing trust fund forward. We want to thank the mayor for including $500,000 and the budget to seed the fund, and the city council for having the foresight to approve his budget. 
A special thanks to uh, Vice President Robertson and to uh, City Councilman Bruce Towler, uh, as well as the uh, mayor's um, office for working together to champion this new and improved proposal. Restructuring the advisory board uh, to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund in a way that will uh, help the administration of that, uh, that particular fund. Again, we at RISC are pleased to be stakeholders on this endeavor, and we appreciate uh, the City Council and the Mayor including us in conversations and discussions on this issue. RISC is in favor, again, of passing 2012-156 uh, and 2012-155 before you tonight. We also encourage prompt appointment of the advisory board within the next 60 days. And we look forward to seeing the board uh, for this uh, affordable housing trust fund draft policies and regulations by the first quarter of 2013. Risk would ask that you keep us involved in this process. We're here to assist and offer our assistance in the nomination process of that advisory board. Anything else that you would like us to help you with, we're here for you. And in closing, I'd just like to say that RISC is extremely excited and we're encouraged about what we see uh, with this Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And we at RISC are committed uh, to seeing that this trust fund is put in place for the benefit of our citizens here in Richmond, for the greater city of Richmond. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Hello. My name is Todd Dykstra, and I'm, I'm a resident of Richmond and an architect, and I'm, I'm here to speak in support of uh, Ordinance Number 2012-142. Um, it's a little unfair because I'm the architect that was, was helping the owner out on this project, but um, I think that the opposition was well worded, um, the gentleman from AMPA events, and... Um, Excuse me, sir, could you move that mic a little closer? Perfect. Is that better? Um, I think just as a general, the, the, the project has been scoped out for the, for the special use, uh, proposes three small uh, single, single bedroom apartments above um, a commercial space on Boulevard. And as an architect, the, these kinds of projects are always intriguing to us because of what they offer relative to what at least I've seen in larger urban areas and larger cities, which is it's, I think it's better in the evening to have lights on on the second and upper floors than to have a dark corridor down Boulevard. And I think understanding that a, a, that a business like AMPA has, has a right to function 24-7 you know, and make as much noise as they want, I think at some point it, it is an urban environment that the noise that they can make should be moderate to, you know, moderated to some, some level to, you know, that wouldn't, wouldn't have them getting uh, calls from residential tenants in daily or anything, um, and I, that's really all I wanted to say. I, I just think it's a, this kind of project is an opportunity to create some vitality and enliven up a, a street like Boulevard. I definitely agree with the person who spoke in opposition that the Boulevard corridor, as a very important corridor uh, in Richmond, deserves um, special recognition and special uh, study to, to enliven it. But I think this project help, helps invigorate a, a very important part of the city. That's all. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Joe Allen. I'm the property owner of 1103 North Boulevard. I've been trying to do some renovation with the building now for 14 months. I've been talking with a special use permit to get the area to be able to put three apartments up there. Prior to this, there was offices up there, insurance office up there since 1964. The building itself was built in 1948 by my family. I've operated a business there up, to, up until 10 years ago. Had no problem whatsoever. Trying to get this advanced to an apartment level because the surrounding area is being addressed as far as apartments in the Scotts addition, the interbaked foods, all this has become apartments. I applied for this 14 months ago. I'm still working towards getting approval to do three apartments, only accommodating one bedroom apartments. Uh, I know that APA next door to me does access and make noise, but uh, their noise level is not bothered whatsoever by anybody in my building. They uh, have a habit of using my back lot to access their building. So I know that this is going to be an issue with him because I will have to use some of that area that he uses my property to access his building. I would like for to see this to go forward. I think I've waited a long enough time and made a lot of accommodations to planning and zoning to make this happen. And with my architect, which is just 
Reform has done a lot of work towards getting this approved. We've made a lot of uh, accommodations to the planning and zoning to make it happen, and I believe we've gone to the full extent of trying to make it as legal and on board as what, this, what people would prefer. I don't believe it will be any, any detriment to the community. I believe it will be an expansive community. We have restaurants there. This will be residential people that will be able to be there overnight to access the residents and the restaurants and things in the area. It will be an added income to the city as well as to myself. But I believe it's a, it's a step in the right direction because the Boulevard Corridor is supposed to be a gateway to the city of Richmond. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Um, I want to speak on um, item number 17, 20-12, I mean 2012-151. Um, all I want to say is um, this is a long time coming for the police department, and um, I think city council ought to vote on this paper. Um, it's a shame that we had to go through taxpayers' money to stretch this out like this. I mean, you know, this ain't the mayor's money. This is taxpayers' money when you're getting sued uh, now the time. And now maybe we can get the police in our area now, Mr. Bird. You know, but it used to come way over south side when we have shootings in the north side. You know, so, you know, the morale of the police department is, sucks. I'm going to tell you just like that. You know, uh, it's bad when you got to wait for the police for about maybe an hour or two to come to the north side when you have a shooting. But damn, some of y'all need to live in the neighborhood and see what goes on. You know, I mean, pay the police what they do. I mean, they, they deserve this. Anytime police be assaulted on the street, that's bull. You know, if you want to assault somebody, come assault me, because I got something for you. Like I said, don't be doing the police department like this. You know, I mean, go ahead and pay them what they do. They do their money, pay them. And the morale will come back up. I mean, because the people in North Side, we tired of waiting for the police. If you go, if you go on Metal Bridge, when Ms. Um, Robinson area is, the police say they can't come over to our area because they belong over in that certain sector. I mean, you know, that's bull. So, I mean, city council needs to, you know, get behind this paper and vote this paper for the police department. Thank you. Madam President. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Can I say something? Melvin. Yes, ma'am. I, I want to thank you for coming here tonight and also thank you for your comments at the public safety meeting last Monday. Um, you are so right. But you know what? I have people in the Blackwell and Oak Grove area and Bell Mead and probably um, Hillside Court. They're upset because we have to wait for the police officers sometimes to come from across the river to come exactly. over here because all of them want to get back in second precinct. But that was done before, before you know, it was back in the day. But anyway, I would love for us maybe, and I think Mr. Marshall and the police chief have said that they would maybe look at that. I know that you need to look at that because it's 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 bad and thank god that we got um community leaders like you and and citizens that come together and work with the police and with the chief because um that's what it takes all of us working together because they can't do it by themselves thank you Mr. i just want you to know people over here in blackwell and Oak grove they fuss all the time because they have to wait for the officers to come across the river and we know that sometimes they have a robbery or, or a homicide or something like that and that might take that's top priority um, that's a top priority call instead of, you know, maybe loud music or some undesirable standing on the street. But, you know, 30 minutes or more, 45 minutes, you know, on a 911 call, that's kind of a long time. Oh, but we're not going to have a back and forth conversation. Thank you. And th thank you. Melvin, thank you. Okay. All right, let's bring it back to council for discussion. Consent agenda. Any discussion? Madam President. Mr. Samuels. Um, I have a couple of quick comments to make. On the library fee thing, I just want to make it clear, this is an uh, increase of $2 in the funding for the city law library, which up until recently was located in my district. This is a key resource for people. To be clear, this is civil, not criminal cases that are filed. And this will increase the amount it costs to file a civil case in the city as an example, a divorce case from $84 to $86. It's not a situation where if, a, if uh, someone's made a mistake and they have to owe this money, it is in order to have your case heard, this amount is due. Uh, Up-to-date books in the legal world, like most professions, are unbelievably expensive. And attorneys pay those 
and the public doesn't have to, the only way we can make sure that each person, each American, has the right to prepare their case, to defend themselves, or to pr prosecute a case for their own behalf is to make sure up-to-date quality legal materials are available to the public. And it's a service that the city provides at a very reasonable cost. Um, I, I want to make that absolutely clear. The ability to accurately and appropriately prepare one's case is sacrosanct in America. And we have to do what we can as a city to support that. Um, as to the paper about the boulevard, I am in support of this. I, I will say I'm happy to work with the gentleman from AMP to make sure that we get on the same page on this. As you all know, about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now, we did a charrette for the boulevard for the people that get to live and work and play in that area about what folks wanted to see. It was a multi meeting situation and a lot of good work came out of it. I'm now working with the administration to take those plans to the next level. And uh, please know that that work is continuing. I've also been working with the Scotts Edition Business Association for that, to that same goal. Uh, this paper was unanimously passed by planning and uh, getting feet on the street both during the day and at night is important for this district and I'm in support of that paper. Thank you, Mr. Samuels. Other comments? Mr. Jewell? Madam President, thank you. Uh, uh, one of the speakers uh, addressed a couple of papers tonight that I'm afraid were huge mis misconceptions. I, I just want to see if we can clear up uh, item number 14 and number 15. Um, it seems that uh, I don't want the public to be misinformed about this. This is uh, um, this is money that the economic development uh, department or, or authority would would administer. These are dollars from HUD, not to HUD. One way uh, that would be made available to uh, uh, to developers and businesses that are attempting to develop property and construct property. Um, uh, Fifteen uh, is one hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars. Uh, it's being reimbursed from the state electoral board to the city of Richmond, not the other way around. Um, that money comes from the state board of elections uh, to reimburse the electoral the city registrar for having conducted. The Republican primary, June the 12th, that took place here in the city, um, and the expenses therewith, uh, they are to be remunerated. And so um, I, I wanted to clear those misconceptions. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Other comments on the consent agenda? Mr. Amell? Thank you, Madam Thank you, Madam President. I, Mr. Amell, then Mr. Hill. Oh, I apologize. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam President. First, I would like to thank Larry Miller, Director of, Public, of um, Recreation and Parks, for all of his hard work on the cemeteries. We're now going to have street names in the cemeteries, and this is a public safety issue, so that when people come from out of town or even in town and looking for their loved ones, they'll be able to find them now once we put the signage up in the cemeteries. I'd also like to thank Mr. Marshall for all of his hard work, and I believe Joyce Davis also worked on this. And... Um, so many other people that was involved in this, the citizens that came before the public safety meeting, and they spoke in reference to um, this would be great to rename or have names in the, in the street, in the cemeteries. Also, I'd like to say this, too. Um, I'm glad that we have finally came up with settlement for these police officers. Those men and women work so hard to take care of us. They leave their families, and sometimes they don't even know if they're going to come back home to their families. Whenever they're called out, if it's May Day or whatever, or off duty when they're not working, they're out there. They come back into our city or whatever, whatever the call is, they're there for us. And where would we be if we didn't have these men and women of the police department and a chief that supports our police officers and the community? It's called community policing. It's when the people go out there and they work together. When you have churches, pastors, ministers, 
that all come together with business owners and with the citizens. It's called community policing. So I am glad that Mr. Mayor and Mr. Marshall worked very hard with the Union of the Police, I think it's Stacy Rogers, to come up with a settlement. And I'm glad that this council also is supporting this because they deserved every penny. Every penny that they, that they work for, they deserve it. And when they're not paid, this is what happens. A lawsuit. Well, guess what? Those men and women stood up for their rights. They stood up for what was right. Those men and women of the Richmond Police Department. And I commend them and our chief. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amell. Mr. Hilbert? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we'll be abstaining on item number 26, uh, resolution 2012-R104, uh, uh, to designate properties. Uh, as a revitalization area. I'm doing this not as uh, a councilman, but as an employee of the Virginia Housing Development Authority. This uh, resolution uh, makes this property eligible for um, our financing, and it's an abundance of caution. I will be abstaining uh, on that matter. I have no uh, approval authority for this loan. I'm not underwriting it, uh, but I think the people uh, need to know that there are no conflicts uh, relative to our voting, and therefore I will be abstaining. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hilbert. Any other comments on the consent agenda? Call the question, please, Madam, clerk. Madam President. Yes, sir, I'm Mr. Tyler. I too need to declare that item number four on the consent agenda, which is 2012-103, I have a conflict of interest and will be abstaining on that one motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. The clerk, please call the question. Council is now voting on tonight's agenda as read. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Except Aye. number 26 and abstain. Thank you. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye on all items except item number four, which I'm abstaining. Okay. President Graziano? Aye. And for the record, Mr. Tyler has filed a conflict of interest for item number 14, ordinance number 2012-103. And Mr. Hilbert has abstained from item number 26, resolution number 2012-R104. The consent agenda has been adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, we have, um, I think we have a few expedited papers. Let's do those now. That is correct. Would you like to have all three of them done in a block vote? Let's do them in a block. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, resolution number 2012-R106 is to approve an expenditure in the amount of $1,000 from the council district funds for the 5th district to make a contribution to Second Chance Supportive Services. Resolution number 2012-R107 is to make the same expenditure. However, that's going to be coming uh, from the council district funds for the 6th district to make a contribution to the Second Chance Supportive Services. And resolution number 2012-R108 is to expend the amount of $1,000 from the council district funds for the 7th district to make a contribution to the Second Chance Supportive Services. I will need a motion for expedited consideration of those three resolutions as read. Councilwoman Newbill, will you make that motion? So moved, Madam Clark. Council is voting on Councilwoman Newbill's motion for expedited consideration of Resolution 2012-R106, 2012-R107, and 2012-R108. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. Those papers are before you for consideration. Thank you, Madam Clark. Is there anyone from the audience who wishes to speak in opposition to any of these papers? In favor of any of these papers? All right, back to council for discussion. Please call the vote. Council is voting on resolution 2012-R106, 107, and 108 as presented. Mr. Connor? You. Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. 
President Graziano. Aye. Those three resolutions have been adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, may we have the approval of the minutes? The minutes to be approved for this evening are the informal and formal meeting, council, meeting of ses, council meetings for Monday, July 9th at 3 p.m. and July 9th at 6 p.m. I need a motion for the approval of the minutes. Mr. Hill, will you make that motion? So moved, Madam Clerk. Council is now voting on Mr. Hilbert's motion to approve the minutes as presented. Mr. Sam Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Mr. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. Those minutes have been approved. Thank you, Madam. Clerk, at this time, um, we're going to have reports and announcements. Mr. Connor. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, tomorrow evening, we're having our district meeting at 5515 Bryce Lane. Uh, on the agenda, we're going to talk about the, the police are going to have their updates. We've had some activity in the 9th District this past month, and they're going to get us up to date on that. We're also going to be talking about the Neighbor to Neighbor program. This is the program I've been telling you about, that if you have an area that needs to be cleaned up, we have city volunteers that will come out and do that. So this is what we're going to tell you about on that one. Uh, we are also going to update on the uh, laundromat zoning. Uh, my folks will know about that when I tell them. That's a paper we're putting in to make sure that a laundromat doesn't turn into a nightclub. So anyhow, we'll talk about that when we get there. So we look forward to seeing the meeting starts at 5 o'clock. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Connor. I have to hear more about the laundromat nightclub. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> I, want, uh, I want to go to that laundromat. Like <laughs> 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 hey, wash you get to wash your clothes. Mr. Tyler? You don't want to hear what I just said, do you? Oh, <laughs> okay. no. Oh, okay. I was, I just, I got them all No, but I'm sorry. On. I mean, I mean, why should just the, that the, side the, of the room get a good you know, knuckle, I mean, you know? <laughs> I mean, I could. Okay. You sure? I'm not. Okay. <laughs> uh, on a more serious note, uh, tomorrow night uh, we have a first district meeting, which is Tuesday, July 24th at 6:30 at Mary Mumford. There are two items on the agenda uh, that I think have uh, a major impact on our on the first district, and the first one is we're going to have a conversation about the Livy Grove. Uh, BP station special use permit and the second one that we're going to have a discussion about is city stadium but a broader discussion about the impact of uh, the Washington Redskins if they are in fact in or near the first district so tomorrow night those are the two items that we will be discussing again and it's at um, 630 at Mary Munford Elementary School also um, Last Wednesday night, I attended a chamber dinner, and I was honored to receive uh, an award from the chamber called the Above and Beyond Award for 2012. And this award is given to me uh, for all the times that I have taken to attend meetings on at the, that the chamber has had to promote business in downtown Richmond. And I tell folks in no uncertain terms that my job is to promote business in the downtown and the Richmond area, and I'm very honored and pleased that they gave me this award on last Wednesday night at their annual dinner. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. Congratulations. Ms. Trammell. Thank you, Madam President. Last Thursday, July the 19th, we had our 8th district meeting. And I want to thank Mark Bridgman from CAPS, which, is, which stands for Community Assisted Public Safety. And his number is 646-2277, 646-2277. He came to us, he gave us some great reports, and he also talked about what you can report and how they handle, how that office handles um, citizens' complaints and things like that. Great, great meeting. Got a lot of issue, got a lot of citizens' forms that were filled out for Mark, so I can't wait to get them to him. Also, I want to thank Linda Brody Myers, who's the who's on the um, Greater Richmond Transit Company GRTC. Um, she is a board member. We council members put in, appointed her to, 
to the board. She's doing a great job. She spoke to us about transportation. Also, um, Cora Dickerson, she was with us. She's with United Way of the Greater Richmond Area in Petersburg. She also talked about 211 and about programs that they offer. So I want to thank her for all of her hard work and also Linda Brody Myers. Also, we had um, the police there from, it was Lieutenants Angie Green and um, Lieutenant from the first, oh my gosh, um, and third precinct. They came to us, they gave us great reports, and um, took a lot of information from the citizens there. And today, 24 police officers were promoted, 24 police officers. And three of them were promoted to captain. One is Angela Green, and Martin Harrison, and Emmett Williams. They're now our captains. And I know Ang Angela, we call her Angie, we know her from Second Precinct, which she comes to all of our meetings and she gives us great information. Um, Martin Harrison, we know him, and also Emmett Williams, who's worked so well in um, First Precinct over there with Blackwell and Oak Grove. I know many of them cried when he left because he's such a great officer and now he is our cap now he's the captain. So congratulations to all of them. Congratulations to all the lieutenants and sergeants that were promoted today. And also, I want to say that our police chief gave a great, a great, great speech today. He was talking about crime being lowered in the city of Richmond and how proud he was of the men and women that serve as police officers for the city of Richmond. And he also praised the citizens of Richmond, Virginia, for working together with his officers. And when you have a police chief that that commends our police department and commends the women and, and the men and the women of the police department and their families and also the community for all of them working together getting along and working with all of us no matter what area we live in and i know that we got some other areas to go in and i know that not everything is is cleaned up yet but i know that with our officers um, wanting to help wanting to be there that's what it takes so I want to thank all of them and thank our police chief for all that he does and the citizens, not only in the 8th District, but in the city of Richmond. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, we're going to be at the Broad Rock Library. That's tomorrow morning, Tuesday, July the 24th, because I know sometimes they watch this on a Saturday and I say, oh my gosh, when was this? It is tomorrow, July 24th, 10 a.m. We're going to do a ribbon cutting for our library, the Broad Rock Library. It's going to be remodeled. We have worked on that for so long, and it's going to be beautiful. So everyone can come out there and for the dedication of our new library in our 8th district. Also, this is your smoke alarm. This is free. It's the only thing free right now. Remember that. If you call 646-1526, 646-1526, these firefighters will come to your house. They will put this smoke alarm up for you for free. If you need a battery, they'll put the battery in there for you. Don't cost you a dime. And sometimes if you cannot get that number, if you go to your nearest fire station, they will come to your house. I know that because I saw this happen last week. They will come to your house and they will put the smoke alarm up for you, whether they will give you a battery. Remember, these smoke alarms, they save your life. And if you would just go there, you know, go to any fire station, tell them that you want your, battery, your smoke alarms checked, they will come there, no charge. Also, I'd like to thank the men and the women that come to our 8th District, um, the firefighters from the men and women that come there to help us, give us good information, good reports, and also um, Sarah, I can't remember her last name, Sarah with Neighborhood Watch. She's been telling us a lot about how to start a Neighborhood Watch, how to get our signs for Neighborhood, neighborhood Watch, because that's what it takes, citizens getting involved in their neighborhood. Also, don't forget about National Night Out. That'll be August the 7th, Tuesday, August the 7th. And I think there are about 14 in the 8th District for that night. And again, it's Tuesday, August 7th is our National Night Out. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Trammell. Dr. Newbill? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I would like to uh, extend a hearty welcome to all seven district residents to come out on uh, the uh, Tuesday, August 7th, uh, for our National Night Out uh, celebration. This is our second district-wide uh, National Night Out event, and so it is uh, 
multiple civic associations working together to have a large event in the district that will include entertainment and face painting and free refreshments, uh, community information, and uh, please bring your lawn chairs, uh, bring your bikes. As a matter of fact, the first 50 to arrive with their bikes will receive reflective vests. And so this is a great opportunity for our community to come together to really talk about crime and crime prevention, drug prevention awareness uh, throughout our community and to have a great time as well. And so again, our second district-wide national night out event on Tuesday, August 7th at 5 p.m. at the corner of 25th Street and Fairmount Avenue. Please come out and look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I want to report that we did have our quarterly uh, fifth district meeting uh, because we sort of span both sides of the river. We alternate, and so this month, uh, this quarter, we had it at the Southside Community Center, Southside Plaza. I was elated to see a lot of our West End folks, uh, folks north of the river, uh, come across that river. I don't know, some, some, some of our folks just refused to cross that river. Uh, but they did that night. It was a well-attended event, and we appreciate having everyone. Uh, Anthony McLean uh, was there uh, to give us an update, particularly after that awful storm the first part of the month, uh, to give us updates on, uh, on emergency service response uh, to, to catastrophic events. Um, and we talked about the absence of... Uh, the recreational services on the south side, uh, from Chippenham south all the way uh, west, all the way out to the county, um, and south all the way down to uh, uh, Chippenham again, <laughs> down the bottom. Do I have it right? From Huguenot south is what I should say. Um, Forest Hill south. Uh, there's nothing for teenagers. Uh, now, there are programs for the young ones, but nothing for teenagers, and, and I'm saddened to learn just last week that the <coughs> Boys and Girls Club in Southwood uh, is now closed down. And, and the kids, at least in that community, uh, I think it's in Doug Connors District, um, uh, at least those kids that live in that neighborhood use that place, and now it's been shut down. So... We really got to get on the stick. I got to thank Mr. Marshall uh, and uh, Director of, uh, of Parks and Rec, uh, who, um, Dr. Merrifield. Merrifield, thank you. Uh, uh, who, who met with us over at Swansboro Church a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we are looking at a facility that we can set up as a recreation central location. He's working with uh, the principal at, at, at George with High School to see if we can get that gymnasium open. And uh, he's looking to see if we can get staff to begin setting up programs over there. Meanwhile, volunteers are stepping forward and anyone with ideas and or uh, assistance, uh, we urge you to get in touch with us. Um, my number is 332, cell number 332-3654. And Ms. Young's number, my liaison, is 646-5724. Uh, we will have Government Operations Standing Committee of Council on this Thursday. That would be July 26th at 5 o'clock. We've been meeting at 4 o'clock, but we are now meeting at 5 o'clock. Uh, second floor, large conference room here in City Hall, where we will discuss, among other things, um, uh, the first group of audits that have been conducted, uh, but that there are still outstanding recommendations to be complied with, and we need to see what we can do to move that process along. Uh, those recommendations overwhelmingly represent savings efficiencies and savings 
And so the people's, uh, the people's monies uh, are at risk when we fail to follow through and comply with these recommendations. And we'll see if we can't move that along. We'll also talk about the uh, criteria for the tax exemptions. Any number of people or groups have submitted um, uh, requests for tax exemptions uh, for real estate taxes. Um, and some of the, most of them are not for profits. Uh, they're struggling in this god awful economy. Uh, anything we can do to help preserve these organizations who own these properties and, by extension, then preserve these properties, these buildings. Some of them are historic, most of them are uh, excellent buildings that give value to the city. So, um, We'll be having those discussions on this coming Thursday, July 26, 5 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Ms. Robertson? Thank you. I know, but I've got to do the committee. Duty call. I'll be late. Mr. Jewell, are you finished? I you done, Mr. Jewell? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were being called to action here. Okay. Uh, if he is called to action, um, we do have the Virginia Army National Guard that is working over on Cannon Creek, <laughs> on the Cannon Creek Greenway, um, Mr. Jewell. And if, so if you've been called to action, we can put an extra soldier over there to help us finish cutting through the trail, the Cannon Creek Trail. Where? <laughs> have you been called to action? Have I been called to action to, to come to... Your district. We're just joking. The work on that Greenway walkway. Is <laughs> That's that what we're okay, talking Mr. about? We appreciate it. Don't uh, get me started. Yeah. Uh, we do have the Virginia Army National Guard uh, have about 57 soldiers that are over there working on phase two of the Cannon Creek Greenway, which they plan to finish up. This week, Wednesday, a couple of weeks of time that they spent over there, and uh, it's amazing the work that they're doing. Close to a half a million dollars of uh, in-kind services to the city of Richmond as a part of the work that they're currently doing. We will be having a um, brief get-together with them tomorrow afternoon around 5 or 6 o'clock to just express their appreciation. And so uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing the work that they've done and preparing to finish off the second half of the Cannon Creek Trail uh, as it makes its connections to the East Coast Greenway to be promised. This is not a trail that's going nowhere. Um, likewise, uh, I'd like to um, announce that the uh, city staff, um, the working in conjunction with um, residents of the Bellmead community, uh, were the receiver of an EPA award for the Bellmead Creek watershed um, of $59,000. Uh, there were several uh, grants that were available that were available to 32 different states in the United States and we are grateful that the wonderful work that the staff has done to work with the residents there, that we were chosen as one of those. And, and the top, of, the amount of the grant is 30000 to 60000 and we received a grant for 59600 and some odd dollars. So um, we want to um, compliment the community as well as the staff for their work in making that a reality. And we're looking forward to cleaning up the watershed of the Bellmead Creek. Also on August the 25th, uh, Fifth Street Baptist Church, in, in partnership with a lot of other civic organizations, churches, nonprofits, and other organizations, is putting on their sixth annual We Care Northside Festival at Hoshkiss Field from 10 to 3 o'clock on August the 25th. Fifth Street is also uh, doing a fabulous job in increasing the opportunities of awareness for identification, correct identification that is needed as a part of the voting uh, this year. They will have the DV, DMV two-van um, 
in the North Richmond community on July the 30th from 9 to 4 at 5th Street Baptist Church on 3rd Avenue, and again on August the 17th at the uh, Benefield Building, which is a part of Boaz and Roof at 3030 Meadowbridge Road. Uh, that will be on August the 17th from 9 to 4. So anyone that needs a picture ID, even though a picture ID is not required as one of the identification for voting, however, uh, if you need an identification and you want to make sure that you have identification for voting this year, uh, make sure you stop by the van and take care of that. Likewise, uh, we are also having, uh, we want to encourage uh, the residents of the 6th District to come out to several of the locations throughout uh, the 6th District for National Night Out. But we particularly want to uh, make mention of the fact that the Quality of Life Leadership Team that has been working out of Ann Hardy Park is having a planning meeting for their National Night, National Night Out activities uh, this Thursday from 5 to 6.30 at the Ann Hardy Park. Um, and that's Thursday the 27th, I think. Also, Biden Heights Civic Association is, has reorganized and they will also be celebrating National Night Out um, at uh, Poe and North Avenue. Uh, and I'd like to make an announcement to the fact that they will be giving a special recognition to our own uh, Mr. Raph Harris, uh, you all know Raph Harris very well and the wonderful job that he's, he did for the city, but he also did a tremendous job in the community and organizing the Civic Association and getting it running up and so forth. And um, so as the organization go back through the reorganizational process, they want to have a special uh, ceremony and recognition and appreciation for the work that Raph Harris did and that will be at the National Night Out at uh, North Avenue and Poe Playground. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Robertson. Mr. Hilbert? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the next uh, third district meeting will be held this Wednesday, July the 25th, 6 o'clock at uh, Pine Camp Recreation Center located at 4901 Oldbrook Road uh, adjacent to Henderson Middle School. Uh, joining us will be the Richmond Police Department uh, to discuss crime statistics as well as National Night Out, which has been uh, discussed before, which is coming up in August, uh, as well as the uh, uh, Anthony McLean uh, will be uh, on hand to discuss uh, hurricane and storm preparedness, and we will also uh, have a uh, brief presentation and uh, uh, an introduction to the new director of the Northside Branch Library on North Avenue. Uh, the, uh, the Health, Human Services, and Education Committee met last week. Uh, there was a presentation by uh, the Social Service Department relative to Child Protective Services cases uh, that are handled within the department. Uh, there is also a uh, presentation from Ken Dye, uh, Government and Community Relations uh, uh, for Comcast, where they indicated that uh, they could have um, Internet essential programs uh, to possibly provide at least Internet access, not a full computer, to uh, our young people in the city. And so uh, we're going to look further into that and hear from uh, Richmond Public Schools at our next meeting on August the 18th. Um, and we are going to go ahead and meet. We are the only city council committee that is going to meet in August. Uh, but I do believe that we particularly need to address the overflow shelter issue as well as this report from social services, which was uh, particularly concerning uh, given the number of cases that we have in. Uh, in child protective services and making sure that uh, we address uh, keeping our kids in safe homes in the city. Uh, we will be hearing from uh, Dr. Carey from the Richmond Public School Systems on uh, this computer issue and we will also, uh, as I said, be hearing about the overflow shelter. So we feel these issues important enough to continue to have a meeting in August 
uh, and we look forward to uh, discussing those issues and um, others that may come up between now and then, but particularly those two. Uh, that meeting will be held August the 15th here at uh, Council Chambers at 5 o'clock on Wednesday, August the 15th. Uh, we also, there's a current issue of the district newsletter, which was sent out uh, a couple of weeks ago. If you didn't receive one, please call Lisa Towns at 646 6055 uh, so that you can get a copy of that. You can also email her at lisa.towns at richmondgov.com. Uh, we also uh, send out a weekly email blast uh, from the district, and those you can sign up for those by again calling Ms. Towns at 646-6055 or sending her an email at lisa.towns, D-O-W-N-E-S, at richmondgov.com. Um, and of course, your email information will be kept confidential. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Hill and Mr. Samuels. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, although we do not meet in August, there is certainly no such thing as an August break, just more of an opportunity for us to be out in the community with our constituents. Uh, come September, the, the second district will be having a town hall meeting. I have recently sent out the quarterly newsletter that I do every quarter. It's on green paper. The date for the town hall meeting is on that. And please, let's not forget National Night Out. A great night. Uh, August 7th, I'll be scurrying this way and that across the district, making sure that uh, we get to get out there and let people know that we are for real about safety in the city of Richmond. Lastly, I got an email that I thought was worth show, uh, sharing. This is the 40th year anniversary if you graduated from the Richmond Public School System in 1972. There's going to be a major reunion this year for those folks. And if you need more information, you can contact 1972 RPS Class Reunions at comcast.net for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Samuels. I believe there's a PS over in this side of the room. Thank you, Madam President. I forgot that we're not meeting again in August. We're not going to meet until September. But our 8th District meeting will be on August the 16th. It's Thursday, August the 16th at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the satellite 4000 block of Jefferson Davis. Again, our 8th District meeting will be meeting um, Thursday, August 16th from 6 to 8 at the satellite. If anyone wants to contact me, they can, they can call my home at 233-7382. Again, that's 233-7382. Also, I want to thank David Hicks, who's the Senior Policy Advisor to the Mayor, um, for giving us an update about the um, Juvenile Detention Center. He provided a lot of information, and he's even willing to come back um, maybe in September to update us with more information. So again, I just want to thank um, David Hicks for taking his time to come to our public safety meeting and keep us updated with the Juvenile Detention Center. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Trammell. Yeah, I just want to say that tonight, um, when we were doing the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, I missed hearing Ruby Turner under God. And I um, just want to say that we're working on how we're going to do something special for her seat whether it's a plaque or what we do. We do something for that seat because that's Ruby Turner's seat. Um, I also would like to say that I appreciate the generosity of Mr. Jewell. <laughs> um, also, I'm going to have my district meeting. We don't have the date yet. It'll be the end of September. The beginning of September, the first meeting in September, we will take up the tax exempt papers. There will be no... Um, meetings of full council in August. So anybody's welcome to come down here and sit, but we won't be here, so sorry to say. And um, also, I just want to announce that Sally Ride, who's the first female astronaut, died today. So that's sort of another, I guess, sad thing. Um, I guess that's all I really have. So Madam Clerk, could we read the papers into the introduction? Yes, new legislation for this evening is as follows, ordinance number 2012-157 to authorize a special use 
of 930 Terminal Place and a portion of 950 Terminal Place for a multi multifamily dwelling with up to 178 dwelling units upon certain terms and conditions. Council's Planning Commission, September the 4th. Council's Public Hearing Date, September 10th. Ordinance number 2012-158 to authorize the CAO to execute a memorandum of agreement between the city and the Crater Youth Care Commission for the purpose of providing accommodations for city juvenile detainees for a period of not to exceed 13 months. Council's Public Safety Standing Committee, September 17th. Council's Public Hearing Date, September 24th. Resolution number 2012-R109 to reappoint J. Stephen Lloyd, Jr. as a member of the Richmond Ambulance Authority. Council's Public Hearing Date, September 10th, 2012. Resolution number 2012-R110 to reappoint Charles Winston Ellis as a member of the Board of Fire Appeals. Council's public hearing date, September 10th, 2012. Resolution number 2012-R111 to appoint Yuming Jimmy Shin as a member of the GRTC and Transit Study Task Force. Council's public hearing date, September 10th, 2012. Resolution number 2012-R112 to reappoint Peter Blake as a member of the Richmond Public Library Board. Council's public hearing date, September 10th, 2012. Resolution number 2012-R113 to reappoint Jody Vince Moyer as a member of the Richmond Behavioral Health Authority. Council public, Council's public hearing date, September 10th, 2012. Resolution number 2012-R114 to appoint Aaron M. McClure as a member of the Social Services Advisory Board. Council's public hearing date, September 10th, 2012. Resolution number 2012-R115 to reappoint Napoleon L. Peebles as a member of the Richmond Behavioral Health Authority. Council's public hearing date, September 10th, 2012. And resolution number 2012-R116 to rename the portion of the street named Lock Lane between Grove Avenue and Cary Streets as East Lock Lane. The portion of the street named Lock Lane between Cary Street and the terminus past the intersection of Soul, Soul Grave Road as Lock Lane and the portion of the street renamed Lock Lane, which is comprised of the 400 block of such street as Old Lock Lane. Council's Land Use, Housing and Transportation Standing Committee, September the 18th. Council's public hearing date, September the 24th. Madam President, that is all of the new legislation that I have for this evening. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, I will say the meeting is adjourned. And have a good August. As we said before, you never can tell how long the agenda is and how short the meeting is going to be. So. Uh, we started out with a lot of items, but it got boiled down, and here we are less than uh, less than two hours from the time from start to finish. Got started at 6.08 tonight with a call to order, followed by the appointments, and then awards and presentations. My old buddy Tony Booth got an award for uh, 50 years of broadcasting. A uh, good many of them here in Richmond, also in Texas and Korea and Pennsylvania, all over the place. But uh, old buddy Tony, <laughs> way to go. Uh, let's see, after we got to the budget amendments, or the amendments to the uh, agenda, then the regular agenda, only two papers in the regular agenda. They were basically taken as companion papers. This concerned the construction of a new road between 2nd Street and uh, Tredegar Street. Uh, it's one of the 17 years in the making, and it took a whole six minutes before it was unanimously approved. So that uh, is a go now. Then we got to the amendments and continuances, and then the citizens' comment period, and that... Uh, took about 30 minutes by the time we got done with the citizens' comment period. That finished up. We had three expedited papers. Uh, what those were basically were uh, $1,000 each from three different districts to the Second Chance Supportive Services. Followed by that, we had the approval of minutes, the reports from council, the introduction of papers, and that is it until September. So don't forget, we will not be meeting in August. Our next meeting will be on September 10th. And we'll come back with more of City Council. So, as the song goes, we'll see you in September. And for Gavel to Gavel, I'm Dick Harmon. Good night.